love the way you want to be my friend and still make racist jokes about me. I love the way you think your race is superior even though we came from the same two people. I love the way you feel awkward around me because of the color of my skin. I love the way you make assumptions on my life based on what you heard. I love the way you acknowledge all the progress your race has done, but never knew what mine has. I love the way you talk about my culture, but exclude me from it because I'm your friend. I love the way you think this is okay for you to do because of your privilege. I love the way you think this is okay for you to do because of your privilege. I love the way you think this is okay for you to do because of your privilege. Hello and welcome to Arts and Power. Our next guest, who I also love, a new poet and director of Story Tapestries, Valerie von Schnellsberg. Hello, Valerie. Welcome to Arts and Power. Hello. I'm excited to be here. All right, great. So first, how did you first come in contact with Story Tapestries? Uh, how did I, I first came in contact with Story Tapestries was at Stephen Barker's wedding in 2018. Um, we reconnected and Stephen has been one of my best friends. He was on the board and now he's our current managing director. Um, and he basically was like, how do we get you to move here to Maryland? And I was living in Chicago at the time. And I said, well, it, I need a grown up job where there's room for growth and I'm utilizing the skills that I've built for over the last 20 years. And so that's kind of how it all began. And about, um, a year later, nine months later, I was living here in Maryland in April of 2019. Uh, what was your first project with Story Tapestries? Oh, well, I started doing work with them before I moved here. So I was working remotely for a few months or so. And so uh, I attended a board retreat. So I got to kind of know the board members. That was like my first project. And then as soon as I got here, I was, it wasn't specifically a Story Tapestries project, but I was invited to join uh, the Silver Spring Network Weavers Learning Lab. Uh, so that was a racial equity cohort that took 24 people and we um, studied as a group and met a couple of times a month for over a series of nine months and we explored our biases. We looked at um, the history of institutionalized racism in the United States. We um, developed like advocacy plans and we just really truly focused on learning about what inequalities are out there and, there, and then therefore how do we what do we want to do next to um, to kind of shift that culture? Um, did you do work like this before Story Tapestries or was Story Tapestries your first like? Like in terms of, I've been teaching, I've been a teaching artist for over 20 years. I've taught preschool all the way through college. I used to be an adjunct professor at Boise State University and uh, the uh, Virginia Commonwealth University. So I'd done work on the university level as well. Um, yeah, no, I've been doing it for many, many years. I just haven't had the company that Story Tapestries has behind me. I was just kind of a one woman show and I, would, I wouldn't I would formalize it. it. It it just, I kind of fell in. All of my great jobs have been ones that I've kind of fallen into through word of mouth. Um, but one thing that I did get to do when I was in Chicago is I taught for another nonprofit called uh, High Jump, and I taught theater in the summer to seventh grade students, and then during the school year, I taught social justice in America. So that was a program that I was really proud of. So no, I've done this work on and off, but with Story Tapestries, it's far more like formalized and the state of Maryland has far more funding 
than any of the other locations that I have been directly in contact with working. So, yeah. As a white woman working with students who are like largely of color, do you struggle with feeling culturally relevant to them? Why or why not? Oh, absolutely. I struggle with it every minute of every day. Um, I'm constantly feeling as if, am I the right person to be here? Uh, am, is it my voice that, how, how can my voice help um, BIPOC individuals find their voices? So yeah, I struggle with that daily. However, I rather be in an educated position. I rather use my privilege and my access to, to uplift as much as I possibly can while recognizing that, that I may not be the, the right person to, to be at the head of the line for any reason. Um, I had a professor once who had this amazing way of breaking down like different types, different roles of leadership. So you're either like a captain or a creator or a coach, um, a collaborator. So there's these different types and everybody has an attribute of all of them, but what is your default, so to say? And I find that myself as a leader, I'm more of a coach, which is, hey, I really think you can do this and this is how I can help support you versus say a captain that's like, hey guys, I have this idea, will you follow me? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so then, um, so I, I look to that a lot of the time, um, but I'm not gonna lie, I feel like a hypocrite a lot of the time. And the one thing that I, I keep getting, you know, kind of back in my ear is that it's okay to speak in draft and you're going to make mistakes. So that's how I approach this work as just myself. Like I'm a real pushy, impatient person sometimes. And so if I don't think that something's happening fast enough, then I'm going to want to just do something. But that can also then be perceived as, oh, well, she's, you know, using her white privilege. She's just in, yeah. So it's a balancing act, but I'd rather be in the fight. I'd rather be working towards anti-racism education and, you know, being told, hey, you know, that's probably not where you should have stepped right now than just sitting in the background, not even making a decision at all. So I know you write just a little bit. I know you write <laughs> a little bit. So what got you into writing? What inspired you to write? Oh my goodness. You know, honestly, uh, working with Reggie Kabiko and, and listening to you, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I have always been what I've considered an interpretive artist. I want artists to right? Like I'm a director, I'm a divisor. Like I want to take what people create and then I can help shape and go, oh yeah, but what if we did this? And what if we did that? And I've never had the impulse to actually make a statement myself until recently, until, you know, until working with Amplifying, Amplify Us, working with you, working with Reggie, and just like the structure of how easy it is. And then, so sometimes I, I now will write. Uh, most of my writing is very angry. <laughs> um, very angry or very uh, stream of consciousness that, uh, you know, I even get exhausted rereading. So, um, so I haven't quite like I can assess and help sculpt what other people write, but I can't quite do that for myself yet, mm -hmm. so. All right, and to tie it off the interview portion, do you have a favorite poet? I, I don't, I don't have a favorite poet. I, but I do love finding those, those moments. You know, I, I like a lot of Langston Hughes. I like, um, Maya Angelou, um, 
and and it's interesting because once I, I get to know a poet, like I, I have the privilege of being face to face with active artists. So it's not just this ethereal person who is away. And so I feel like by knowing them, I'm a little bit in on the secret and then their poetry reaches me at a different angle that I find is deeper and more impactful. Thank you so much for this interview. So now we're going to play a game called Word of Words. The rules are that we have to try and convey words with different words. It's similar to heads up where the person gives tries to guess the word by giving clues. The first person will guess the words that the other person are thinking of at that point. Ooh. All right, who goes first? Um, you can go first since you're our guest. Oh, okay. Um, uh, leader, information giver, um, mentor, teacher. Yes. Yes. All right. Do you want me to go to the second one, or you want to go back and forth? Uh, you can do the your second one. Okay. Um, rhyming, meaningful, um, uh, artistic, writing. Poet? Um, written. Ooh. Author? Uh, um, um, uh, almost the word before scribed. Poetry. Yes, 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 yes. Poetry. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if I, it was if poet was close enough, so I was like, oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, paint, express, um, writing, poetry, arts. Yes. All right. Small, young. Small, young, yeah. <laughs> hey, that, was, that was good. It was great. Woo. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you, Karina. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear uh, what you have next that's, you know, ready to, to be uh, voiced in the world. So thank you so much for having me here today. This was a this was a true pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any social media that we can follow you? Or um, you can follow you? Story Tapestries on uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, myself, I usually present on Wednesdays. I do Magical World of Words. I don't have a personal, um, like I'm not an influencer or anything yet. I mean, you could just look up my name, Valerie Boss Slashberg, and friend me. Um, I have an Instagram and a Facebook, but uh, I would definitely guide you guys to our Story Tapestries one because uh, I'm on it all the time and we have amazing other performers as well. So. Odds and Power is a youth-hosted and produced web series that highlights the work of performing literary and visual artists using their art to better the world. Arts and Power is a project through Montgomery Community Media's Youth Media Academy. Learn how you can support this and other MCM programs by visiting us at mymcmedia.org.